Yeah. Thanks. My name's Ray Davis, and I'm the Beatle of the. I'm the Beatle of the group. Um, before I start, uh, I'd like to. Uh, 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 memos come into my possession from our record company. Now, <clears throat> I, don't, I thought about reading this tonight, but I think it's very important. It's uh, from our record company. Memo read the Kinks. <coughs> this is the third release by the Kinks on our label, and as you know. The sales of the first two records failed to live up to expectations. <coughs> we all know that the Kinks are a very unique band, but are difficult to promote. <coughs> you say? I recommend, and this is to the ANR Promotion and Business Affairs, I recommend that if this new Kinks record is not a success, that we drop the kinks from our label and not renew our option. Now, this letter was sent 25 years ago. Uh, <laughs> before the release of You Really Got Me. Well, I, I'm not comfortable with these uh, affairs. Uh, I'm sniffing. I won't cry. But. This is a very posh event, and we're all tarted up to be here tonight. Um, and I'm looking at the picture on the wall over there of the Kinks, and we're still wearing the same band suits. We're a very thrifty band. We had to be. But, you know, when we started, I, I didn't really think people associated with my lyrics, because I just wrote lyrics to get out get out of the house and uh, get out of college and uh, make a living. It's true. You're laughing, Sting. This is true. But um, it wasn't long that I realized when all these great bands came over, Martha and the Vandellas and uh, the Righteous Brothers and uh, the Beach Boys, that uh, there was something wonderful happening. And it was uh, communication through language. And I was brought up to see John Wayne movies and uh, Robert Mitchum movies, uh, ugly Americans. But the music changed my perspective a lot. And I've learned to, from being a very British person, English person, wanting to serve my empire in my own little way. <laughs> to respect other cultures. And this is another culture. And um, seeing everybody here tonight, it makes me realize that rock and roll has become respectable. What a bummer. I, mean, I, I hope that, uh, that's okay, when bands like us and the, the Who, who are a fine band, I remember them as a high number supporting us, and they're the craziest drummer I ever saw. But the drummer, drummer in that band, I won't say too much because uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot said about him. I think Keith Moon changed the sound of drumming. And, uh, <clears throat> and Shell helped a lot, Shell tell me. Yeah. But um, I came here and I learned that the first time I reached America, we were signed, I think, to Reprise Records at the time. And... Um, we were met from the aeroplane. Dave was 16, I think, and I was about 18. We met with all these... 25, Dave, sorry. And uh, I was met by these men in black suits and sunglasses, and I thought, yeah. <laughs> and um, I was very intimidated by this country, but now I've learned to admire these very strange people who eat pizzas and <laughs> pump iron. I wanted to serve my country as a musician or something. I don't think it would have been possible if it hadn't have been for America. Because I think it was this country that realized that you could have built a career with rock and roll. Whereas in England it was just disregarded. This is, uh, so that's why I'm here tonight, not for the so-called respectability because anyone who knows anything about us... <laughs> 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 yeah. 
that that uh, would be a, a joke to try and say we're respectable. I do draw my images from the street, from the little guy, as uh, um, Graham said, and I'm learning, learning to write well, and I hope to do it for many years to come. And maybe in 25 years' time, rock and roll will become dither and shake. But uh, until then, I want to thank everybody here. And more than anything else, I'm dressed up in this ridiculous way for my fans, who stayed with the Kinks when our record sold 25,000 copies. And I, if uh, they need any help building the uh, Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Mick Avery is not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> He's quite good with the bricks. Uh, thanks a lot. You know, um, good on you, America, and keep it going for another 25 years. Bye. <laughs>